So when we're working with gas laws, when do we use the ideal gas law and when do we use the combined gas law? How do you know when to use each one of these laws? So we're going to take a look at that and give you some practice. The big deal is we're dealing with changes in pressure, volume, and temperature for the combined gas law. That's the one and the two. That's our initial. That's the one and the final is the two. So if you have a pressure that changes to a new pressure or a volume going to a new volume or even a temperature to a new temperature, that's going to be the combined gas law. We're dealing with changes from one set of conditions to another. So for the ideal gas law, you're only going to have one set of conditions and you're probably going to have moles involved. Although you could have moles in this equation here, although usually we don't see that very often. So if you have moles, look and see if you only have one set of conditions because we're talking about a particular point in time. So let's look at some problems and see if we can identify what law we should use. So here's the question. We have liters and a temperature. And we want to know what will its volume be after it cools. So it's cooling down here. So we have initial and final. We know that it's going to be the combined gas law. And they say that pressure remains constant here. It doesn't change. But since we're dealing with a change in temperature and volume, combined gas law. Okay, let's try another one. Pause and see if you can figure out which gas law we're going to use for this problem. So we're looking for volume and we have grams and you know you can change grams to moles. So if you see grams, also think moles. And then we have STP, that's standard temperature, 273.15 Kelvin and the pressure, let's put it over here, one atmosphere. So which law should we use? We only have one set of conditions and we have grams, which we know we can convert to moles. So since there's no initial and final, we're just looking at a particular point in time here, you're going to use the ideal gas law. All right, another one. Pause and give this one a try. So when I look at this, right away I see what will the new volume be? I know something's changed, so I already know it's combined gas law. And there's say the new temperature, that also tells me I have an initial and a final so this is definitely going to be the combined gas law. Pause and give this one a try. So here we have volume and pressure, and then we have volume. We increased the pressure here. The pressure has been increased. It's changed. And we want to know what the volume will be in the future. So we have initial and final conditions, and we don't have any moles or grams here. This is going to be the combined gas law. One last one. Give it a try. So right away when I see moles, I'm thinking this N here, that's our moles. I'm thinking ideal gas law. I see we have a volume, a temperature, and a pressure, but it's all just one set of conditions. There's no final set of conditions. So nothing's changed. We're looking at a particular point in time here. Ideal gas law. So that's it. The key is you're looking at initial and final. It's going to be a combined gas law. If you have moles and only one set of conditions, that's going to be the ideal gas law. This is Dr. B looking at which law you use, ideal gas law or combined gas law, when you're solving problems in chemistry. This is Dr. B. Thanks for watching.